Good evening, everybody. You're in for a great show tonight. Why don't we give a hand here for the legendary mandolin player, Mike Compton. And, and, the, and the equally legendary guitar picker, banjo player, songwriter, former Missouri boy, yeah. Joe Newberry. Yeah. Compton and Newberry. How is everybody tonight? If you like what you hear tonight, we're Compton and Newberry. If you don't, we're Daly and Vincent. <laughs> Ooh, you're in trouble. Thank you. 
she can love. Thank you. <laughs> I, was, I seem to be howling a little bit here. Hmm? What you say? Sounds good out here. We'll work on it. Okay. Well, you're a sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that uh, first number was uh, Tennessee Breakdown. <laughs> That's the long version, the short version. <laughs> um, followed that up with Alabama Baby from the Armstrong twins, Floyd and Lloyd. They were a brother duet in the 40s and 50s. Uh, they had that beautiful close brother harmony. They were mirror twins, which means that one would part his hair, or if you will, his har, on the left side. The other would part his hair on the right side, his har. They played great, they sang great, they wore the worst polyester pants in the 70s you've ever seen, and they fought like wildcats, but they made good, uh, good music. We'll, um, we'll, t we'll uh, continue our, our tour of the states. Um, I've brought the banjo from North Carolina. I know that sounds like a threat, but uh, what is don't start, it? Don't start nothing. Banjo's like the nuclear deterrent. You pray you don't have to use it. But. Play a little bit of Texas gals or Texas gales. Well, I only know how to play one instrument, so. Boy, yeah. but you can sure do it. I'll tell you what. I'm, not, I'm unemployable otherwise. <laughs> I have no skills. <laughs> well, we'll hang out in C for a little bit. I think okay. you do all right. Uh, I will not get this too fast. I will not get it too slow, but maybe half fast.
sponsor, but I missed a note that last go round. <laughs> could you tell where it was? I could not tell where it was. Okay. Let's play it again. Well, All right. Out. Kick it off. So uh, Mike and I are doing uh, 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 a Missouri run. We're, d we're, in, uh, we're here in St. Louis tonight. We're in Lebanon, Missouri tomorrow, Springfield on Friday, and West Plains, my mother's hometown, on Saturday. Yeah, it feels like going home to Mayberry a little bit. <laughs> Me and Barn, we're here on the road. Um, got a corner room at the Y. Um, so um, we'll do one from West Virginia for you. Uh, the Cherry River Line. The Cherry River Line is the temporary railroad that they would build up to the top of the mountain to cut timber and haul it down. And um, when you play this kind of music, when I play this kind of music, I think about the people that I learned it from. And, and uh, really and truly, if you play this kind of music, you know that we stand on the shoulders of giants. And so I, I can't help but think about Lester and Linda McCumbers and Sarah Gray and our friend Jerry Milnes when I we sing this.
Thank you. This is real nice to be able to play these kind of songs and with this temperament and this uh, these kinds of music. These sounds is so much different than a lot of the the bluegrass stuff that I grew up playing. And after being around uh, Hartford, he didn't didn't really want any kind of this this chop chord thing which caused me great distress because that's, you know, I had tried to spend all of my life up until I was in my, about what? About 1990, trying to learn how to do that right. And he wanted everything but. And so it was, it was kind of like trial by fire. But being able to play this, that, that, that experience with him made it to, uh, opened my mind up a lot more and it made it to where I, I could back up Job doing what he does because it's, it's, it's a completely different thing. And in many ways, it's a lot harder to do that. All the, the kind, different kinds of backup and, and harmony, everything that's available. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot more work. Doing it. And there's two, I mean, there's two of us and that's the thing about a duo, the duo form, there's really no place to hide. You have to really trust each other and uh, you know and, tr and trust the songs and trust the songs and the words and and not get in the way of the words um, I, you know I played for years with a band called Big Medicine and that we sort of straddled the line between bluegrass and old time and I think one of the reasons I played with them so long it it got me sort of a little bit caught up so I when I started playing with Mike that we could uh, we had much more common ground so it's just, and it, there's, there's so much more music than just doing this. <laughs> Although I will admit, I'm, I just went like. Roland White, Roland White said one time, I'm, and I realize I've broken our momentum, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> he was having a Christmas show in Nashville. I, well, I mean, part of this is being able to have memories and relive them. Uh, he was, he was doing a Christmas show in Nashville, and, and at one point, he invited um, a bunch of students up. I, I think they were maybe like junior high school, or uh, about seven or eight kids got up and were all had F5 mandolins, and they lined up right behind the, the microphones. And so the rest of us kind of got to the back. And whenever it started off, they were all just all at the same time. And, and Roland sang a couple of verses and then he walked across and he walked in like right behind them and, and in front of me going doing this. <laughs> and he went back and forth about three times and then, then the last time he, he, when he turned around he was going like this. And he's kind of scowling, and when he walked by me, he said, this gets to be like damn chopping wood after a while, doesn't it? <laughs> and kept on going, and I busted out laughing. <laughs> and when he got over there, he turned around, and he had a smile on his face this big. Well, <laughs> and he cracked himself up. And Roland also knew that at, even though it felt like chopping wood, that those kids were playing with Roland White, and they were, they were digging that. So, and that's... Shoot, I was, too. Yeah, you were playing with Roland White. Man. Anyway, I... Was, <laughs> uh, that was uh, my, one of my fondest memories of him. But but what I was started to say was if if I hadn't had the opportunity to work for John and and also work with with the the Elmos a lot when we was out yeah. here, I would have never learned how to do this. Yeah. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, uh, Jim. <laughs> Nelson. Now back to the entertainment. Uh, no, well, th th it's, that's the thing, Mike working with John, and I knew John when I was a young man as well. It's uh, everything's part of the show. And, and I, I love hearing Mike talk about those days that, uh, just as good as playing music, too. So there you go. So, um, you know, uh, Nelson mentioned that I'm from Missouri. You know, you can always tell a Missourian you can't tell him much, but I, I, I am from Missouri. <laughs> And I found myself, you know, we're at that we're at the age uh, um, where I would find myself coming home mostly for funerals, and I just got tired of it. And so I started reaching out to see if we could play some music back here as well. 
And I was down, we stay with my cousin Joanne down in Ozark, Missouri when we go down that way. And I noticed, you know, all of my people are gone. Mother, dad, sister, aunts and uncles, everybody's gone. And I noticed on her wall, all of my family, they just exist now on a wall. And so my friend John Lowell and I uh, wrote a song called Sweet Shadows about that. And uh, it, has been, uh, it has been a year of loss for our community in, in Missouri and all around the country. So I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send this uh, out to the memory of Eric Stein. Just uh, so strange to walk in here and not see him. And we'll also send a little, little uh, cloud, cloud of love up to Kim Lansford. So this is Sweet Shadows. My family now, their pictures on the wall, their voices only echoes in my mind. Sweet shadows of the past help me recall the way they were my dad and mama when they were newlyweds their lives before them fresh as morning dew it's so strange to see dark hair on their heads and my face reflected in their features too my family now they're just pictures on the wall their voices on echoes in my mind sweet shadows of the past help me recall the way they were before this wall of time I wish I'd known my parents parents better but I can see their kindness beaming through the frame those photos and a packet of old letters Makes me happy that I bear their name My family now, they're just pictures on the wall Their voices only echoes in my mind Sweet shadows of the past help me recall The way they were
sounds pretty good, old bud. Yeah, man. <laughs> no way, no, but either one of us started crying or nothing. <laughs> no, we, we made it through. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I have recorded a new project. We're, we're in the uh, process of mixing it right now. We recorded it with our friend Adam Engelhart in uh, in Nashville for um, at his uh, his studio, and uh, we we at Sony, and we uh, we we uh, laid down this Sweet Shadows, and we're we both get up and sort of weave our way out into the control room. It's like we did it. <laughs> We don't have to sing it again right now, do we? No. Uh, we've all got pictures on the wall. That we've happened. all got pictures on the wall. Yeah. Is our friend Joseph here? Joseph and Grace, did they make it tonight? Well, well, the, the, um, they might be uh, watching online. This is for... This is for Joseph. He likes uh, he likes this tune, Last Chance. Are we online? I think we're on. No we're... cussing then. Yeah, next week. Next week. Oh, good. So like <laughs> a seven-day delay. That's <laughs> that's strong. That's stout. I mean, hell, Saturday Night Live just had seven seconds. We've got seven days. Gonna have to do a lot of work. But uh, Joseph likes this uh, this tune, and, and uh, when uh, when you start playing, how many how many banjo players do we have? Too many. Uh -huh. uh, banjo owners? Do we have banjo? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and mandolin players, and then mandolin owners. All right, yeah. When you um, shame. when you start playing this this old old time banjo, you want to play fast. And, and it usually is a little less precise than you want it to be when you're starting out. But uh, Hobart Smith in Southwest Virginia used to play this tune. And he was fast, but he was very clean and a, a real model for you to aim for. And uh, it's in its own tuning, uh, last chance tuning, which is F, C, F, C D F C F C D. If you have trouble remembering it, think of your friend Newberry's elementary school report card. F C F C D. Mine used to have on the on the back. It would say, uh, "Does not use time to advantage. Does not follow instructions." <laughs> Just tormented, tormented my mother. Yes. I've, I found a couple of them recently. Uh, on there all it of, is right there on the back. On all of my elementary school report cards, uh, Joe is a good student but enjoys talking. <laughs> yeah, the first grade teacher that I remember, Ms. Morgan. She sat and she would she would get frustrated and she says, I have talked to you children until my eyeballs are sticking out on stems. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I just that I just thought when I was that age, I just thought, oh my God. What must that be like? Well, this is for all of our elementary school teachers. Uh, maybe. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> it's what? Last hmm. chance. Last chance. <laughs> Thank you. 
if you saw something sort of white and spindly fly out into the crowd, it was my thumb. Please grab it and <laughs> bring it back. I did it myself. You want to play another one while you've got the banjo? Sure. It's almost, almost a shame to put it down. You want to uh, try that graveyard? We can do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mentioned standing on the shoulders of giants. One of one of my favorite um, favorite banjo players and entertainers was cousin Emmy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, she, Emmy, was a great banjo player, a great singer, and um, she used to do um, these schoolhouse shows. And she told a young man who was doing schoolhouse shows with her, she said, Lewis, Lewis, you ought, to, you ought to try the banjo. I'll show you some stuff on the banjo. I think it'd be good for your show. And that was long before he was Grandpa Jones. It was Lewis Marshall Jones. So, um, and Emmy, I mean, you've got to love a woman who says, friends, I love each and every one of you. And if you like this old Tommy music we're going to cut off for you, we'll work our full selves to death for you. <laughs> this, is, this is inspiring. She did a, a song called Graveyard. <laughs> Somebody came up to Mike and said, Hey man, what's with all the death? <laughs> it's like, here we are. This what's with is, all the death, man? What's with all the death, man? If I die a railroad man, you can bury me in the sand so I can give old number nine as she goes by. Graveyard, graveyard. You can bury me in some lonesome graveyard. When I die, don't bury me at all. Said when I die, don't bury me at all. You just pickle my old bones in alcohol. 
something else real no, quick, no, try sir. to lighten the load. No, sir. From the first minute that Mike and I started playing music together in 2009, I said, do you write songs? Because he's, he's got one of the greatest loves of language anywhere. Uh, and, and he said, no, I don't have anything to write about. Well, a few years ago he started. And uh, boy, he's doing great. out to uh, dedicate to my my late mother Frances Gaynell Weeks Compton Walton she's the one that encouraged me to if I wanted to play music to just go on and do it she said go on and do it son and then she said I don't have to like it <laughs> good one mom yeah it's just like mm. she <laughs> When I was about 15, 16, started playing mandolins and just scraping and beating on them, trying to figure out what to do with one. And uh, I was bogged way down one evening in my teenage angst. <laughs> and I was in there trying to figure out something that Bill Monroe was doing and uh, had no play, point of reference or no place to start to try to figure it out. And she, she just kind of peeped in. She said, how are you doing, son? And I was like this. I said, I don't know. I can't figure out what he's doing. I just like I kept finding on. I don't know where it's at. I don't know. I don't know how to figure this out. And I, and I, I heard this. I looked up and and the door went, click. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of went, okay. <laughs> and she went back to the other end of the house with the rest of the family. <laughs> anyway, this is dedicated to her. Death and Blues. She had uh, she had dementia of uh, 2020 and uh, contacted contracted a case of COVID at, at, uh, around Thanksgiving of that year and and died second day of uh, January. Well, I got to I got to talk to her and play her some some and hold her hand and all the the, the evening before she she passed so. I, I got the impression that she knew I was there. And she did. She squeezed my hand a few times, so I thought, okay, she's she's here. So, this is for her. Both were looking right at me, I said. 
said, won't you leave me be? I could see him walking slow. Death slipped in without a sound Death did his work and didn't even stick around Blues came walking like a man Blues he had a different plan Death slipped in Now the blues has moved on in In the mirror I can see his awful grin Turn the key and lock the door I can't stay in this house no more and blues they came to town one was smiling and the other wore a frown one to take what he would take one to move right in and stay death and blues they came Kind of the imagery of that is what kind of helped me get over the hump of what was going on. It's just like seeing those figures walking down the road towards the house, and uh, that was something I could hang it on and just let it let go of it. So, so that was a therapy song for me. Well, buddy, it worked. I tell you, folks, I've been doing this song writing a long time, and that's one of the best songs I've heard in the last ten years. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, well, here's how our... The, it our, ain't our, the most fun. <laughs> that's all right, but I'll tell you what, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's sort of the story of our times, and so I appreciate you doing it. Um, here's how our, the, the middle part of our evening's going. First thing is to thank the folks at the Focal Point and Thomas, our sound engineer, and everybody who helped bring us here. Our friend Jim Watson will take a five minute break for 10 minutes. We'll see you in 20. <laughs> we missed a lot of ow. We missed a lot of stuff over the last three years, including that give and take between us and you. And and uh, it's it's good to be back out. We're being careful, but it's good to be back out. Um, I I even missed the record table, which is <laughs> You know, the, the, the thing I miss about the re missed about the record table is that people will come up and they will talk to you and you have no idea what they're going to say. <laughs> and so, 
we were doing a show, a woman came up to me, and this is how she started her conversation with me. <laughs> I said, ma'am? She went, can you not write a fun song? <laughs> I guess we had had a lot of songs about the dead relatives in heaven or something, but I, I got a little pouty about it. I said, yeah. I think. So I, I took a fiddle tune title from uh, Western North Carolina called The Darker the Night, The Better I See. That's almost a, it's almost a honky-tonk song right there. You might have heard the Gibson brothers do it. Uh, they do a fine job, but this is the way it was originally written in sort of a little uh, honky-tonk beat, and uh, we'll take a little break. And we sh So thank you for coming out and supporting live music. Just have to do that for a while. That looks good. I've honked town most all of my life. My day begins at the edge of the night. I stay up late. Don't bother me because the darker the night, the darker the night better I see Oh, the lights I love are the lights of town I thank the Lord above when the sun goes down Find a shady spot and that's where I'll be Because the darker the night the darker the night better I see Now my hit parade has about three chords But I'll guarantee she won't be bored Starts getting good Around quarter to three Oh, the darker the night The darker the night The better I see shady spot and that's where I'll be oh the darker the night the darker the night the better I see the break of the day what some call work I call play I once was blind but now I'm free the darker the night the darker the night the better I see Find a shady spot And that is where I'll be Why? Oh, the darker the night The darker the night The better I see You heard me right The darker the night The better I see Ain't I a sign The darker the night The better I see
How was your break? Was your break good? I noticed there were still some CDs left back there. It's all right. If that's the worst thing that happens to us tonight, that's going to be all right. We'll play a, 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 a tune from, uh, that, that I, I play a lot when I, uh, I live in North Carolina now. I've lived there a long time. And we'll send this out to my friend Susan, who plays Clawhammer. She's played Clawhammer since she was 17 years old. So here's a, this is nothing but mandolin and Clawhammer right here, Susan, for, but it's for you. for the 12 day bicycle race. <laughs> How about instead we play Silvertone guitar? Okay, do we have any John Hartford fans here? Yeah. Hell all right. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> well, all right. Um, I heard John do this song maybe two or three times. That's one I can learn. I, for, I plum forgot about it. I'm, I'm walking behind the lawnmower one day out, thinking about how John had, had risked all of his show business career and everything to just 
to just be himself, and he, he was was never afraid to stick his neck out and be different. And and uh, I started thinking about this song, and I it, I like not to never found a copy of it, but it was written by Benny Martin. <laughs> Silvertone Blues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people are here. That's my favorite song. It's not even over yet. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Ta da! Wait a minute. Gotta mm. get some goop. This is my new thing. It's a good thing. It's going to get tedious. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> something to play no. okay it don't work that way you have to use it it's like right away we used to play some with shad cobb and he'd do stuff like that and uh, i just thought good heavens i wonder if i could follow that so uh, some some of it is is just well it's all just playing through chords but it, some of it is uh, some some Sort of Atlantis stuff that Bill Monroe would do with was just playing triplets, da 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 over and over and over and over and really fast, and everybody just go woo. So woo woo woo. 
<laughs> well, all right. Mighty fine. No, it's just Speaking of Monroe, it's yeah. parlor tricks. Play, but you play, can't do it though. Play one of those. You can't boogies. either. Play one of those boogies. A boogie. A what boogie. key would you uh, like? Um, your your choice. Mr. Monroe wrote, wrote four of these. Four. Four, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes. Yeah. And C, G, D, and A. Yeah. Mm hmm. They're all the same melody, really. Mm hmm. Well. <laughs> Said the banjo player. <laughs> I play four notes. They're good notes, but I only play four notes. You only need four. No, they're, they're similar in structure, I should say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know, it was a nice try. Hey, hey. This is uh, the second? I believe the second one. I don't know. I know. Oh, that, that brand new F5 that he had. Well, it was actually about 10 years old when he got it, but uh, that brand new F5 sounded mighty good on that record. Bluegrass Special. It takes a certain um, level of uh, fitness to play bluegrass like that, and currently I don't have it. <laughs> so, but I have joined Planet Fitness, so any day now, 
It's going to be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait. No judgment. Oh, yeah. No judgment. Yeah. If you have a sort of a slow start and routine for a 67 year old man, <laughs> no shame. Nope. Every step off the couch is a step off the couch. <laughs> Absolutely. I wonder if they have a, like a couch routine you could do. We could, you know, I have called sit down square dances before. <laughs> I've been to one. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Played one of those with you. <laughs> You know, um, we mentioned that we, we were enjoying being out. Woo! <laughs> we, we're enjoying being out and about a little bit more. And um, folks wonder, you know, do you, do you get homesick? And, you know, we, we, we like being home. We like being out here. And, and part of it is we take a little, a little bit of home with us when we go. And I, that's our music. And so Mike and I had never written much together. We started writing some together over the last few years, and this is one that we wrote um, in sort of the, my pandemic project was working on uh, Carter Scratch guitar, Maybell Carter style guitar. So this is one sort of in the, the, the theme of the Carter family called Home in My Heart. I take it wherever I go Homesick can't find me And that's a good start As I travel this old weary road I've built a home in my mind A refuge where ill winds don't blow No stormy horizon But solace I find And home fire strong to bear any toll and made to shed tears just like rain I've built a home in my songs how they will end I don't know no reason no rhyme I'll keep traveling alone I'll live each line as I go four hours apart now uh, a gang up in the house and 
rehearsed solid for uh, three or four days and and uh, we've been lately been right, besides writing stuff of our own we've we've been uh, sort of rewriting some things that seem to suit us so it's 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 more fun and it and it seems more like us rather than well here's a bunch of songs that I know and and uh, Joe says well here's a bunch of stuff that I've been doing and then we just pick from the list well this is kind of like both of us contributed to it and, and making it our own I mean this is one of those there's probably about 450 versions of this song out but uh, Joe had a good version of it but I thought you know everybody I can think of has done that that way why don't just that's just not yeah. <laughs> One of the things, I mean, Mike and I have been playing together steady since 20, uh, 2009. And in those 14 years, we've, we've, we figured out how to be, um, to disagree with that being disagreeable and, and to make the music the focus of what we're doing. And, and Mike was right. I, I loved this version of the song, Careless Love. And I loved, I loved the singing of Joe Thompson from Mebane, North Carolina, one of the last African-American fiddlers. And, and, uh, but he, he said, and rightly so, he said, everybody does it like that. He said, why don't you put, it, put the banjo maybe in Doc Boggs tuning? And our friend Paul, Paul Brown says that Doc Boggs sang like his face was coming, his bones were coming out of his face. Very unsettling banjo. This is the this is the standard Doc Boggs banjo tuning. Yeah. And so, but when, but you know, when Mike when Mike suggested that, it put a different it put a different cast on it. And that's really what every musician, or every duo, or every group wants to do is to make sure that they're they're putting their mark on it. So this is this is our our version of Careless Love. Well, it's love, oh, love, oh, careless love. Love, oh, love, oh, careless love. Love, oh, love, oh, careless love. See what careless love has done. You walk by my door, you wouldn't come in. You walk by my door, you wouldn't come in. Cause me to moan. Love, oh love, oh careless love. Love, oh love, oh careless love. Love, oh love, oh careless love. See what careless love is.
I'll ask of you one kind favor. I'll ask of you one kind favor. I'll ask of you one kind favor. Won't you let my poor soul rest in heaven? played this was his he would that that's a d chord but he would do, always do this that was his that was his sort of like his standard roll and this it's like that ought to be uh, i ought to make money with uh Bulova and uh and, and uh, be have that be an alarm to get people out of bed in the morning like, <laughs> honey did you set the alarm yes tunes I, I learned out of a book. I played trombone in high school, so I, I, I sort of had an idea about how to read standard notation, but I hadn't done it in years and years and years. I did it a little while while I was taking guitar lessons when I was about 13, I think, 14. But I didn't like what he, that guy was wanting me to learn his music that he liked, and I didn't care for it, so I quit. And got a mandolin for Christmas when I was 15 and set into tormenting everybody around me. <laughs> the door goes. Yeah. Click. <laughs> the doors. Yeah. yeah. Multiple doors. Multiple doors, yeah. But anyway, I got in a situation where I was playing with a, NBB was playing with um, an orchestra and uh, it was a Christmas, Christmas pro, a Christmas program, and we we couldn't figure out where to come in and where to butt out, and uh, it was it was well, it was frustrating. I spent all that the rest of that winter with a book that had notes in it about the size of butter beans, and learning how to read music. <laughs> and this is one of the first ones that I'd found in in the book, but I. I learned it and uh, nobody played with with me because especially you folks that, that live here and in, in this state know that this tune has been played to death and nobody would play it with me. So it was until I started doing stuff with Joe and I sort of timidly asked him what he might like to do this tune and he he flipped out. So <laughs> He said, you wouldn't want to play old Melinda, would you? And I went, oh, Melinda! <laughs> Because it was a tune from my childhood, and, and, and I live in North Carolina, and not many people out there play it. And uh, uh, I learned, my, the version that I was most familiar with was from Uncle Bob Walters in Nebraska. And uh, Bob Walters, I, I, don't, I don't remember which conductor it was. It, it, was, it might have been Toscanini, but it was one of the conductors in the, in the 30s on the, I think on one of the, like, NBC symphonic orchestra. But they said, who is the greatest violinist in the world? And at that time... The conductor said, "Well, um, left, left the 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 left hand probably Yasha Heifetz, but the bow arm might be this old man in Nebraska, named Bob Walters. Uh, and so, uh, and Bob would take his wife Goldie around to dances, and they would take a portable pump organ, load it on the back of the wagon, they drive and play a dance, and there's a." 
there's a tune called Shoot Two Bits where you can hear it, um, where Goldie's just wearing, we listened to it yesterday on the way up here. You can hear Goldie do that pump organ. It's like, and Walters is just fiddling his, just fiddling his butt off. And then at one point, thank you. At one point, um, you hear Goldie go, Wee! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I feel when I play Old Melindy with that man right there. So, try it. Give it. That's it. I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was the most that lackluster would... whoopee I've ever heard. Once we start playing the tune, they'll get it, won't they? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Safety in numbers. Yes. <laughs> say Curtis dropped his phone but it was like it's I thought it was something up here it's like did he stumble on stage and go past the mic because I was very loud that's an impressive phone uh, oh you dropped your wife's phone oh my oh good okay hmm this uh this comes from uh Joe Thompson I love Joe Joe's uh Joe's singing and um um, 
he was a gentleman and a gentleman and uh, he's a he's a, he was a giant in our world and, and boy he sure is missed and he would say we got to let people know that we go to church once in a while this is uh, oil in my vessel and, and he'd say uh, my sister would talk to me and and I, I said I don't understand this this I got oil in my vessel my lamp trimmed and burning robed and ready waiting for the bridegroom to come she said son just grow up and be a good man you'll understand it by and by how you doing over there, Mr. C? Close. You know, I don't care what kind of music you play. If you're not in tune, you won't have a, as good a time. You'll be thinking about it as you do it. It's better to be in tune. I see heads nodding. Think of us like we were aircraft mechanics. <laughs> you know, you're sitting there in your window seat, and you see them working on the engine. You don't mind waiting for them to do their job, do you? Kind of works out better. <laughs> Try to start it too fast, I'm like a squirrel. I got oil in my vessel and my lamp trimmed and burning. Wanna be ready when the bridegroom comes. I got oil. My land trimmed and burning Want to be ready when the bridegroom comes Must Jesus bear the cross alone All the world go free There's a cross for everyone And there's a cross for Moody said, get your capo on there, Clyde. <laughs> and Clyde says, no I need no capo, Bill Monroe. I ain't no Clyde Moody. <laughs> um, it's, um, 
we, we travel all around and it's so rare and so so precious to me that this song that we're going to sing it uh, is uh, uh, singing as we rise and I wrote it about my dad and my mother and my sister and there's lots of people in here tonight who knew my dad and my mother and my sister and that's that's a pretty cool thing I wrote it in England and brought it back here um, it um, I've got to tune this or I'm gonna I, they're all up there watching me going like tune it Joe Thank you, Mother. <laughs> so I was, this got recorded on the Gibson Brothers, one of their albums, and I got an email out of the blue from um, the pastor of what had been my home church, Malden First Presbyterian Church. He didn't know I went there. He just liked that Gibson Brothers song and he tracked me down. He said, Dear Mr. Newberry, I'm the preacher in a little church in a little town in Missouri you've never heard of. <laughs> and I would like to do your song, Singing As We Rise, in my church, Malden First Presbyterian. I wrote him right back and said, Pastor, if you look in that third pew on the left, that's where everybody in this song sat. So I'll do it for you and I'll do it for them.
Oh, thank you. You all are good sports and easily entertained, as, as Hartford used to say. Thank you for being easily entertained. <laughs> well, it's it's a pleasure to be back here. Uh, it's a it's a fun place to come, and I appreciate you coming out and and making that part possible. I'm gonna do another one and stop making all this racket. If you take the notion, tomorrow you could just come down I-44 to Lebanon, Morgan Music, 7 o'clock. Come on. Y'all come it. on now, now. We'll go to Lebanon, we'll stop by Fort Leonard Wood, then we'll go get a walnut bowl. <laughs> There's a story there. Lord God, I ate salad every night of my life out of a walnut bowl. There's an idea. Used to be a guy that I, in the summertime, my, my daddy worked for a lumber company and they supplied all like specialty staircases and stuff for a lot of contractors was, was his job. And, uh, in the summertime, he wasn't about to let me sit around the house and not do nothing when I was out of school. So I got about, I got to be about 17, 18, I guess, but was still in high school. And uh, 17, I reckon, 16, 17, in, in between farm work and working for older men who were still wanting to be out there working, and uh, but weren't on any of the crews. and. And uh, I just was a carpenter helper, pretty much just toted stuff and mixed mortar and all that kind of thing, whatever he, they, they told me to do. There was a guy, his last name Long, I think some people called him Red, some people called him Shorty because he was, he was about that, that tall. But when he stood, he stood kind of like that. And that Joe works April Virch, as I'm sure you know, occasionally, and she she when she's the same way. When she stands somewhere, you know exactly where she's at. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> same with Mr. Long. Same with Mr. Long. He was that way. So I spent some of my summers working for Shorty Long. Whatever we got to, it is in the Mississippi summers hot, and uh, we we. <laughs> This is this is true. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We'd sit sat down every day and eat to uh, eat cold cut sandwiches and pudding out of a cup and and he'd talk about being a kid and and uh, he one day he told me that um, he used to tell me gossip about everybody in the neighborhood, you know, which at that point in time just fascinated me. Because I thought, well, I finally made it to adulthood here. <laughs> he said that uh, when he was going to school, uh, none of the girls in his class would would pay attention to the boys from the country because none of them had much money at all. And uh, he devised a scheme. Whenever he's walking to school in the morning and and home in the afternoon, he'd walk along the edge of the road and looking for stuff laying around. He said he'd just pick up nails and washers and stuff and put them in his pocket. Scrap iron, he, he called it. And uh, when he got school, he'd, he'd stand up there and rattle his pocket and uh, made it sound like he had a bunch of, bunch of change in his pocket. He, he said it wouldn't be nothing but a bunch of junk, but he said it'd be maybe like a diamond nickel or something in there, just enough to get a, what do you say, get a, get a knee high and, and go to the movies and have a little date, he said. So uh, this is called The New Five Cents. I always think about him every time that I get a chance to play this, so I thought I might as well just share it with you too. Thanks, thanks for coming and uh, helping us have a good time. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mike Compton. Thank you, Mr. Joe Newberry. Homeboy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mississippi Blues? Right. Is it Breakdown? Yeah. Is that one in G? Yeah, thank you. I mean, I've, I've just remembered Curtis asked me to do a Norman and Smith thing. So I mean, I, yeah, I, it just went through my head as I was finishing that one going, ooh, I haven't done that yet. Mike did a, a great uh, a great project with Norman Blake, the, the uh, Norman and Smith tune. Did you happen to bring some of those? Well, Joe, that's crazy, but it's strange that you would ask. Wow. Actually, from yes. The clever marketing you've come to expect from Compton and Newberry. If genius, um, I, I love this tune for a bunch of reasons, including there's it doesn't go to a single thing on the guitar except G, and so I, you can play G six ways to Sunday, and I really like that. I love watching Mike's right hand when he does this because it's like oh, yeah. trying to trying to figure out how to do fiddle rhythms yeah. with that with that right hand on the mandolin. And I first heard, heard this and listened to it, just sort of getting a, an idea what how it was going. I thought, boy, there's a there's a good mandolin tune in there someplace if I could figure out how to get it out of that out of there. I'm not sure I'm there yet, but it, it's better. Yeah. And lest we forget our manners, we want to thank Thomas for doing exemplary yes, sound goodness. tonight. Yeah. A fine job. And everybody back at the board and our volunteers tonight and Jim Nelson for bringing this uh, uh, in tonight. So, uh, so I've got to get this just right or it'll nearby play itself if I can do that. Mm -hmm. 